All right, so President Joseph Robinette Biden has officially announced who he is going to be nominating to fill the Supreme Court justice vacancy that was left by Stephen Breyer's retirement. And honestly, I mean, I talked about this in my video the other day talking about Michelle Childs, who was one of the front runners in this entire conversation. Uh, I honestly was expecting him to go with the much more conservative pick out of the uh, main three that he had on the table, but he pretty much went in the complete opposite direction of that. Uh, pretty unexpected, but he did actually nominate the best of uh, the three options that were on the table for him. So uh, her name is Kintaji Brown Jackson, and uh, here's his official announcement. And then I'll give you guys a couple of the uh, examples of her history as a uh, as a judge to give us a perspective on the type of Supreme Court, uh, Supreme Court justice that she would be. So he says, I'm proud to announce that I am nominating Judge Kintaji Brown Jackson to serve on the Supreme Court. Currently serving on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit, she is one of our nation's brightest legal minds and will be an exceptional justice. So uh, first, just to start us off here, I think this was a pretty good uh, breakdown from the SCOTUS blog to give us some examples of her judicial career as well as a little bit of her personal life. Uh, not the most important thing, but I think it's kind of relevant in her case. So uh, just to start us off here, they say early life and career. A native Washingtonian, Jackson moved to Florida as a young child with her parents, graduates of historically black colleges and universities who worked as public school teachers. And her father then went to law school, eventually becoming the chief attorney for the Miami Miami-Dade County School Board, and uh, her mother became an administrator and served as the principal at a uh, public magnet school for 14 years. So both of her parents, uh, you know, having that uh, background as uh, public school teachers, etc., I think that's a good perspective to have, just generally speaking, you know, not coming from an extremely, you know, wealthy private school type of background uh, could give her a, a good perspective on that. Uh, but now we get into more of the substance and some of her actual rulings and cases that she's been involved in. Uh, they say in 2005, Jackson became an assistant uh, def federal public defender in Washington, D.C. So this was one of the biggest things uh, that I said at the end of my video the other day on uh, which direction I would like Joe Biden to go. And, you know, nominating a public defender is a good step in the right direction because that's somebody who has had to work directly with people who didn't have, you know, the ability to hire uh, the gigantic expensive legal teams, uh, but instead had to rely on public defenders uh, to go and represent them in court. So I think that's, uh, again, an absolutely great thing to have in her experience, but they say at her 2021 confirmation hearing, Jackson drew a direct line between her work as a public defender and her later work as a trial judge. She told senators that during her time as a public defender, she was struck by how little her clients understood about the legal process, despite the obviously serious implications of criminal proceedings for their lives. And as a result, Jackson said uh, that as a trial judge, she took extra care to make sure that defendants were aware of what was happening to them and why. She says, quote, I think that's really important for our entire justice system because it's only if people understand what they've done, why it's wrong, and what will happen to them if they do it again that they can really start to rehabilitate there. So focusing more on the rehabilitative side of, of justice instead of more on the punitive side of it, uh, she emphasized, and as a public defender, uh, Jackson argued in the D.C. Circuit, including before some of the judges who would later become her colleagues. And uh, more of an example here, they say Jackson, ha Jackson also has, uh, just from personal experience, uh, had a family member who who was a defendant in the criminal justice system. And they say, as Anne, Am as Anne uh, Maramau and Aaron Davis reported for the Washington Post, while Jackson was working as a public defender, she received a request for help from her distant uncle, uh, Thomas Brown, who was serving a life sentence on federal drug charges. And Jackson referred Brown to a Washington law firm, uh, Wilmer Hale, which fi filed a clemency petition on Brown's behalf. And in 2016, uh, Obama commuted Brown's sentence, leading to his release at the age of 78 after over 20 five years in prison so that's just absolutely fucked up and terrible that you know he had to serve 25 years in prison for uh, a drug charge like that but having that familial direct tie to the consequences of uh, over policing and uh, over criminalizing the drug war again seems like it's leaning in the right direction here and just to confirm that they say in 2010 she returned to the sentencing commission after obama nominated her to serve as the vice chair of the commission and the senate confirmed her for the position by unanimous consent and during her tenure the commission sought to alleviate harsh sentences for drug crimes by enacting several amendments to the federal sentencing guidelines, including allowing people uh, with crack cocaine convictions to seek lighter sentences. So again, you see the dichotomy here between uh, somebody like uh, Jackson instead of somebody like Michelle Childs, who I covered in my video the other day, uh, who basically went out of her way to over sentence people for drug related charges. So again, a good sign here. But uh, a couple more examples, they say in April of 2018, Jackson 
Commission ruled against the Trump administration in a lawsuit brought by federal employee unions challenging three of the president's executive orders on collective bargaining rights for federal workers, and the unions argued that the, the orders exceeded the president's powers and conflicted with both federal labor laws and the employees' constitutional rights. And in a 62-page opinion, Jackson ruled for the challengers. Uh, she agreed with them uh, both that she had the power to review their claims and that Trump's directives, uh, directives undermine federal employees' right to bargain collectively as protected by federal law. So pro-labor, again, you see the massive dichotomous comparison here between Michelle Childs and Jackson, just wildly different, both on the, the uh, drug war and clearly on uh, representing employee unions instead of somebody like Michelle Childs, who spent her career uh, working for corporations to defend the corporations from the unions. So, you know, again, pretty good sign here. But uh, just a couple more examples. They say in October 2018, uh, Jackson issued an important ruling in favor of the U.S. territory of Guam uh, in, a, in a dispute with the U.S. Navy. And uh, the Navy had created a landfill on the island that was used for the disposal of munitions and chemicals. And because pollution from the landfill was contaminating a nearby river, the government of Guam entered an agreement with the EPA to shut it down and clean it up. And the cleanup was expensive, so Guam went to federal court seeking help from the Navy to recover some of the costs, which could have re reached as much as $160 million. And the federal government asked Jackson to dismiss the case, arguing that Guam could only seek money from the government under one provision, the uh, Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act, and that it was too late to do so. And Jackson rejected the federal government's argument, allowing the case to go forward. So there's just a couple different examples on labor law, on the drug war, on, I guess, you know, uh, uh, giving aid to places or territories like Guam that have been uh, impacted by the U.S. empire. So, you know, on, on multiple different fronts here, it seems like along with her background being a, a public defender, having teachers that were public school teachers, seems like this is, given that we have a president like Joe Biden, uh, seems like this is probably the best that we could have asked for, given the circumstances. So, uh, you know, credit to Joe Biden for not falling for the, uh, you know, a, a glorious and fetishized bipartisanship that was being pushed by guys like Jim Clyburn and Lindsey uh, Lindsey Graham as well. Uh, so credit to Biden for not going with the most conservative picks that he was being pressured essentially to go with uh, and actually choosing someone who is much more on the progressive side. I'm not trying to overhype it and pretend as if she is like some revolutionary socialist or something like that. She's obviously nowhere close to that. But again, we are dealing with a president in Joe Biden who is a, a neoliberal imperialist ghoul. So, uh, you know, take it, I guess, as a W uh, relative to what it could have been. So uh, there's my little update here and uh, I'll give you guys more information if we find out more about her or her, you know, legal history or personal history. I anticipate uh, these hearings for her confirmation are going to be pretty nasty, given that we're dealing with uh, Republicans that would have been pretty nasty in these affairs, regardless of who Joe Biden chose to nominate. So we'll have to see how a lot of this plays out. I do think that she'll be able to get through at the end of the day. I don't think there's going to be uh, too much of a fight from conservative Democrats like uh, Joe Manchin or uh, Kirsten Sinema. I think she's, you know, relatively moderate enough to uh, get their support as well. And she might even get some, you know, Republicans to flip, maybe like a, a Mitt Romney, Lisa Murkowski, even maybe a Lindsey Graham. I don't know. But uh, we'll have to see how this all plays out. And I will keep you guys updated. But uh, it seems like relative to all of the complete nonsense bullshit that has been going on recently, uh, this seems to be a little bit of a dub.